there's been a lot of talk about cryptocurrencies and a lot of confusion as to what they are. This is because there is a lot of confusion about currency in general and more specifically what money is and how it works. Money is a tool, pure and simple. It acts as a medium of exchange, but in many ways it's also like a form of energy, powering the socio-economic platforms upon which our world is built. Money, as they say, makes the world go round. As our world has evolved as a result of technological and social innovation, spanning the agricultural, industrial, and now digital revolutions, so too has our currency changed in order to most efficiently power those platforms, in order to transfer value, incentivize work, and reward innovation. As the digital revolution gains momentum, transforming almost all aspects of our daily lives, a new platform is beginning to emerge which is decentralized, collaborative, and transparent. A highly fluid platform spanning energy production, transportation, manufacturing and communications, connecting everyone and everything in what has been described as the Internet of Things, or by some as the Third Industrial Revolution. As this platform takes shape, however, it is clear that our money must also change in order to most effectively plug into these new networks and capitalise on the tremendous opportunities they offer. Our present form of money, known as fiat currency, has some serious design flaws that does not make it compatible with these new technologies moving forward. Issued by central governing bodies within individual countries and circulated within the economy by a vast legacy network of banks and financial institutions, this system becomes extremely cumbersome when we move online and transcend national borders. This is because each transaction must be validated and processed by these localised networks. This is why even today, when information can move around the world instantly, a single payment from one country to another is slow, expensive and unreliable and can typically take anywhere from three to five days to settle for small payments and longer for larger. Clearly, this is a problem as we move towards an Internet of Things which requires the instantaneous sharing of data monetized through instant micropayments in order to incentivize collaboration on the network. Then there is the wider issue of trust. As fiat currency has no value in and of itself other than its backing by the national governments, we have no choice but to trust the government and politicians to adopt sound economic policy and effectively control the money supply so that the currency is not debased. Whilst the network of banks and financial institutions must be trusted to act responsibly in their dealings in order to maintain the integrity of the overall financial system. However, the GFC, government bailouts, growing debt and overall systemic and institutionalised corruption has seen that trust greatly eroded. In fact, it wasn't long after the GFC appearing on a message board for cryptographers in 2008 that a new idea emerged in a white paper entitled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. In it, the white paper's author, a mysterious individual by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, outlined a way in which value could be transferred electronically from one party to another without the need for a middleman or trusted third party. The idea was not a new one. In fact, many attempts had been made to create an electronic or purely digital form of money that could be transferred directly between parties. However, they had all failed. And the reason they failed was because of what was known as the double spend problem. You see, when you send information electronically over a network, like the internet, what you are actually sending is a copy of that information. And whilst this is not such a problem when sharing or transferring information like a music file, book or a video, it's a huge problem when transferring value like money because clearly you don't want multiple copies of that money to exist, which could be spent by other people. This is why the internet has disrupted the music, publishing and film industries, but it's had little impact on the core banking and finance sector. The simple fact is that when value is exchanged, we require a so-called trusted third party 
to facilitate and validate that exchange. The internet we have seen up until now, therefore, has largely been the internet of information and not the internet of value. And it was all because of this simple double spend problem that no one could solve. Until Satoshi Nakamoto solved it. His solution was a combination of peer-to-peer -peer technology, cryptography, and game theory. A way in which an open and transparent record of all transactions was accessible to all participants on the network that validated transactions and prevented double spending. To test the network, Satoshi created a new form of currency called Bitcoin and transferred some over to the newly created network. This first transaction was what's known as the Genesis block and included within it a powerful message that made it clear as to what Satoshi's motivation was for creating the Bitcoin network. The message was a copy from a headline from a Times article. The Times, 3rd of January 2009. Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. It was a revolution. Suddenly, the potential to move value around the world as quickly as information now existed, and the internet of value was born. We are only now just catching up. Satoshi had created Bitcoin as proof of concept because money is the simplest and most easy to understand sign of value. But the underlying technology linchpin, which has come to be known as the blockchain, meant that most forms of value could now be exchanged electronically without the need for trusted third parties. That could be money, a share of stock, a property deed, a digital royalty, even a vote cast in an election. The implications are massive. Both the original Bitcoin blockchain and new variations of it with their own cryptocurrencies has sweeping potential to transform vast sectors of the existing economy, as well as opening up huge potential of the Internet of Things through new forms of monetization. In addition, they hold out the promise of giving everybody in the world access to modern banking and financial services through the blockchain, with nothing more than a mobile phone and Wi-Fi connection, vastly improving the economic freedom and potential of the world.